Mes amigo. Is that how you would say that? Yesterday, yesterday we went and just kind of had a real nostalgic ride with old Ronster Cross here. And in the comments, someone was like, hey, do these, uh, do these canties, does the rim brakes provide ample stopping power in the wet? Which is a really funny question to ask in a video where I'm actually going down a descent, modulating the brakes, commenting on how well they're working while it's raining. That's like muddy. So considering it's still drizzling out right now, I thought it'd be fun to go test a cantilever brake setup in somewhat damp conditions to see if the stopping power is ample. Little bit of a spoiler here, they do. Let's talk about the setup. This is my 1993 Specialized Rock Hopper, and I've got a set of silver Tektro Oryx cantilever brakes front and rear. The front brake performance of this thing is aided immensely by the crown mounted cable hanger. These are really hard to find now. Now, to make the crown mounted hanger work on this bike, I also had to drill out the rear hole on the fork a little bit to fit this bolt in. A lot of people ask me, do I have to drill that out to fit the bolt in? The answer is yes. I also use the included cable hanger and noodle. A lot of people ask me why I don't use like the adjustable tunable one. These cable hangers are no thought. I put them on, it puts the hanger at exactly the right spot for optimal power. They've been working great. My ego is unaffected by using this style cable. Hanger. These brake levers, I don't know what these brake levers are. They're just like a no name brake lever, but they do have the two holes, one for cantilevers and one for V-brakes. That means one is long pull, one is short pull. I don't think about any of that when I'm putting this together and I just put the cable in the cantilever spot. And they work great. Now that you know what the very plug and play cantilever setup is on the Grouch, let's go play with it. Okay, spot one, I think is probably the best test for the power that a cantilever brake can have. And a skate park just happens to be the best spot to test it. So what we're gonna do is take this, grab this front brake right up here, and do what we like to call in the biz, a nose press, nose pick. You'll see what I mean. All right, amazingly, some of those didn't feel like the worst thing in the world, which means they look, they look not that great on video. <laughs> I am not totally convinced that this is going to go anywhere, but uh, here I am riding it anyway. Uh, getting over. Yeah, this doesn't go anywhere except for just this really pretty and picturesque lake. This wet eroding descent is a little hairy, but I definitely wouldn't put it down to uh, lack of power or modulation from rim brakes. It'd be seat height. Okay, in the wet, rooty, a little bit muddy woods now. Let's uh, see if we can find something that'll give us an idea of how well these cantilever brakes um, will stop the bike. And if I recall correctly, down this, you know, pretty mellow descent, there is a, yeah, there's like a little bit of a roll, not bad but you'd want to be able to like modulate your brakes and slow down enough. This actually doesn't look as bad as I remember. I'm overplaying it, but we're still doing it. Here we go. Hopefully I don't bounce off the bike.
Did you guys see that deer? I am pretty sure that we have brought grouch to this little descent at every iteration it has ever been. This with the surly sunrises is the best performing, most fun that it has ever been. I know a lot of you really liked this thing with drop bars on it, but it really limited everything you could do with it. And it just wasn't that good of a drop bar gravel bike. Um, I think it just kind of looked cool. This look has grown on me immensely and it's a lot more fun to throw around, play around with, and it's like not bad. Not bad like an uh, old school mountain biker, which makes sense. It's an old school mountain bike. That's a good brake test. This is kind of a new section of trail that I've never gone on before here in, uh, in Shuby Park. It's kind of a long descent that I was like, oh, it's like a great spot to practice uh, modulating brakes. That ends with this and uh, any other bike, you just kind of roll down in through it. But uh, fully rigid 90s mountain bike, you just you think about it a little more. Okay, I think we've done enough things with these brakes to prove that they are, uh, they are adequate. It is a little bit damp out. Some spots are wetter than others and they seem to be working just fine. Let's go back home and finish this video, and then it'll be over. So, what did we learn? Honestly, probably nothing we didn't already kind of know, but I'll offer a conclusion nonetheless. These cantilever brakes will work. They will slow bike down, even when it's a little bit wet out. Are they a replacement? Are they better? Are they superior to a modern hydraulic disc brake? Absolutely not. I would definitely never take this brake setup to go ride some of the other stuff that I ride with. So this thing, or like this thing. But what I will say is if you're on the fence about trying some sort of bike riding, maybe a little bit outside of your comfort zone, and you're letting a rim brake be the thing that keeps you from doing that, if you just wanna go ride something that's like a little bit outside of the bike's capabilities, um, don't be a dingus and try it anyway. You'd be surprised how resilient bikes really are.